Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make the shield from He-Man. I started out with a pack of EVA floor mats that I got at the hardware store. These are really cheap, about 24 inches square. I needed to make circles, so I took a scrap piece of wood and screwed on a foot to the end of it. I pushed this panel along the fence barely into the blade of the bandsaw, and from that cut I drew a diagonal, at no particular angle. I drew marks every inch along that line to tell me how big of a circle I was going to be able to cut. Each of these can act as a center point. I made a mark roughly in the center of a piece of foam and then drove in a wood screw. That screw also got driven into the mark on my line according to the radius of the circle that I wanted. I put the whole sled onto the bandsaw and clamped it to the fence, then I could turn the foam to get a circle cut. I did the same thing for a second piece to have two pieces cut to the same size. The third circle I did was a little bit smaller and it was out of this corrugated plastic. This is stuff you would make a sign out of typically, and you can get it at just about any home center. This piece will go in between the foam pieces to give the shield some rigidity. I used barge contact cement to stick all of these pieces together. All of the surfaces need to be coated all the way to the edge. It needs to dry for about five minutes on both surfaces before you stick them together. Once they're a little bit dry, they will bond once they touch. So I did the back of one piece of foam and the other side of plastic let them dry, stuck them together, and then moved on to the other piece of foam. This takes a little while to do, and it smells very bad. Make sure you wear a respirator, you don't want to be breathing this stuff in for a long period of time. Finally, I got everything covered and all stuck together, and I added some weight because it bows a little bit once you get the contact cement on there. Even with that weight, there was still a gap because of the plastic in the middle, so I went back and added a lot of clamps all the way around the shield to hold it together. The unfortunate thing here is that the clamps left a mark that never seemed to come out of the foam. The good thing is it's only on the back because the front gets covered with another piece of foam. I cut another big circle of foam and then used a piece of PVC pipe to make a circle right in the center. I held a marker along the edge and spun the piece to get an outer circle. From this center point and this circle, I started making some lines to draw the design of the shield. This was kind of guesswork and the proportions aren't exactly correct, but it's from a cartoon that was really badly drawn so I wasn't that worried about it. Once I got some reference marks, then I kind of freehanded the shapes that needed to be there, going from the outer circle to the inner circle. It took a few tries, but once I finally figured out the shape that I wanted, I went over it with the black sharpie so that I wouldn't get confused when I went to cut it out. To cut the straight lines, I used a straight edge and a box cutter. I freehanded some of the curves and they came out okay, but a big thing here is trying to keep the blade perpendicular to the material. If it bends at all, then you have a curve on the inside that you have to go back and sand down, unless that's what you're looking for. I used a Dremel with a sanding drum to clean up the insides of these cuts. It worked pretty well, but it was kind of floppy, so I put it in the vise and used it kind of like a spindle sander. This actually worked out really well. I had a lot more control and was able to get nice curves on the inside or straight lines if I wanted to. Once it was shaped, I laid it on the shield and traced those cutouts. This is mainly for reference when gluing up later, but also I laid my hand in place and figured out four points to make straps. I drilled through this all the way and then drove in a bolt from the top side that reached out the back side. I went ahead and put some nuts on these to hold them in place. Flipped it back over to the top and added more barge cement to the top surface and the back of this new piece. I pressed it on and it held right in place, no clamps needed. I took it back to the bandsaw and used the circle jig to trim all three of these pieces even so I had a nice flush outside. I got ahead of myself and went ahead and covered this with a primer. I should have just waited till later. But while it was drying, I cut another piece down to a rough circle and heated it with a heat gun, the front and the back. I pressed it into a cereal bowl and let it cool in this shape. Then I had a dome. I used a belt sander to flatten out the bottom edge and then fit it onto the shield. I made marks where it intersected the top piece of the foam and then cut those out with a utility knife. I tried to only cut out a little bit at a time so I wouldn't have any gaps, but I ended up with a few gaps. It wasn't a huge deal. Once I was pretty happy with the fit, I used some more barge on both of these pieces and stuck them together. Pressing this down to let the barge set up helps remove some of those gaps as well. I primed this as well, but really I just should have waited till all the foam fabrication was finished and primed it once. I used a caulking tube and sharpened up the opening in the bottom with a utility knife. This basically makes a circular blade so I could cut out circles of the foam. This was actually quite a bit of work, but they turned out pretty good. Cut one and then had to keep sharpening it so that I could cut out 11 more. I used the belt sander to clean up the outer edge and the bottom surface and then gave all of these a coat of primer. To add some battle damage to the shield, I used a straight edge and a blade to cut some lines as if it had been hit by a sword. Cool thing about this foam is when you have a cut like that and you heat it with a heat gun, it separates. So it makes those cuts a little bit deeper and a little bit wider. The bad thing is that the heat gun also bubbled up the primer. 
I used the Dremel to add some more battle damage of a different type, more of a notch, and then used some wood glue to seal up some of the seams on the outside of where these three pieces connected. I laid out my circles, tried to get them as even as possible, and then held them in place with some CA glue. I used a metallic paint that's basically just silver to cover the entire shield front and back. I tried to do several light coats so I didn't get any runs, and it actually worked out pretty well. It's super shiny, looks super fake, and so running over it with a really fine steel wool takes off some of that shine. It makes it look a little dull and used, and it was just kind of experimentation to get it to look like metal. I had some really bright red acrylic paints from my model making days, and so I used that to fill in these four sections on the front of the shield. I actually just barely had enough of this red paint, so it's a lot thinner in some areas than I would like it to be. But I had just enough to get it done. Then it was time to start the weathering. I used some sandpaper to actually give it some scratches everywhere and take off the shine of the red, and then pulled out my old model paints and just took whatever colors I had on hand, wiped them on, made the grossest looking colors I could think of, and then wiped the majority of it off. The paint that gets left behind just gives it texture and depth and makes it look used. There's tons of good resources on YouTube about weathering. Adam Savage has a nice one, and there's a huge prop community that has tons of resources about this as well. Good thing is there's no right or wrong way to do it, and you can keep going as long as you want to. To make the handles on the back, I used some plastic pipe strapping. I didn't have any leather or anything on hand, and this is the same stuff I used for my water balloon cannon. I cut a couple of pieces down to length and made sure that they would fit over my arm, and then drilled out the holes so they were big enough to go over the bolts. Then I put them on the bolts, and then just put on the nuts. Really simple here. I made one big enough so my arm could come in and out easily, and the other one a little bit closer to the shield so it would act as a handle. Here it is. It actually turned out way better than I thought it would, and it's super light, super durable. The weathering process can go on and on if you let it, so eventually I had to make myself stop and just say this is finished. Up close, there are a few problems. You can see some bubbles in the paint, but if you scoot back a couple of feet, it looks pretty good, and I'm really happy with this, especially because this is only the second foam prop I've ever made. The first one was this knife, and I did this live on my Twitch stream over a couple of different streams, and I was really happy with how this turned out as well. Eventually, I'd like to make the He-Man sword that goes with this shield, and no, I'm not gonna be cosplaying as He-Man. That would be awful. I would just like to have the shield and the sword hanging up on the wall. Now, all the stuff I learned about foam fabrication all came from my buddy Bill Duran at Punished Props. I'll link him down in the description. You should definitely go check him out. He has wonderful YouTube videos that teach all sorts of stuff, and he has two books on using foam. One is about costumes, one is about space guns. Be sure to go check him out. I'm really enjoying working with foam for a lot of reasons, but one of them is because it's really inexpensive. I got all the foam I needed for this project and had some left over for $10. The plastic panel that went on the inside of this was maybe $5 at Home Depot. So the materials really don't cost very much. And if you don't have a bandsaw or any of the other power tools that I use, really all you need is a sharp knife. It takes a little bit longer to make all these cuts with a knife, but you can definitely do it. That's it. I hope you enjoy this build as much as I did. Let me know what you think in the comments down below or at my website, iliketomakestuff.com. If you want to support these videos, be sure to go check out my Patreon page. I'll have it linked in the description along with all my social links if you want to follow me on any of the networks. I've got a couple of other things here for you to check out in case you're interested. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.